the Mighty 80 series. And in front of us today, we're gonna to compare a 94 to a 95 and what the differences are. And in the examples today, we have two well outfitted rigs, which we'll go over some of the suspension differences. We're looking at an old man Emu on one and on the other, a Icon Stage 3 suspension, both about the same lift height. One does look taller than the other. That might be illusion of the bull bar in front. But first question for you guys watching this video, which one's the 94? And you know, one has aftermarket lights. Don't let that throw you, but look at the grill. That's the telltale sign of telling which is a 94 and older in the 80 series and which is the newer. So yes, if you said the Toyota grill spelt out, that is the 94. 95 through 97, they moved to their uh, Toyota Sombrero logo in front. Some say written out is better. Some like the other one. I'm, I'm partial, I like both. And uh, one has an ARB bar in the front, the white 94, and the other one is the American Overland Expedition bar, which I like, because look at that uh, approach angle is huge. Now, both of these fully capable and great. And I'm not gonna go over the 91, 92, because that's when the 80 series started. And that one was the sluggish one, I guess you could say. People who ended up wanting an 80 and buying a 91, 92, only to find out later, that there was a more powerful inline six engine, a 4.5 liter, we're a little bummed because that truck, that's the biggest complaint, will be it's underpowered. And some say these are underpowered and 95 and up, so the uh, Moon Glow Pearl one here, gray we'll call it, you could put the TRD supercharger. You could not, or you'd have to do some modifications to get it on 94 and older. So let's, um, you know, in 91, 92, I'm talking about weak power. Here's why. It got the FJ62 3FE engine. That engine was 155 horsepower and about 220 torque. So the torque was decent, but 155 moving this big rig, it was definitely underpowered. And uh, the engineers at Toyota quickly figured out we need to put something stronger. So in 93, so this is a 94, remember, but 93 similar truck. Uh, they got the 1FZ FE for fuel injection engine, which is a 24 valve um, inline six. So a lot more powerful, you know, coming from that four liter going to a 4.5. And the horsepower, 212, and the torque about 275. And again, you could supercharge the 95s and up. So here's some of the differences. You know, obviously a stock model will look very similar. Uh, in 95, well, I think 93, 94, they went from conical lug nuts to the washer type, which is common on all Land Cruisers and LX 470s and 570s and 450s. Um, another big change between these two. So the grill, which we pointed out at the beginning, the headlights. Yes, I know the gray one has aftermarket headlights, but one stock, the headlights have different mounting points. So you could not go buy headlights from a 94 and put it on a 95 and up. So they're definitely both different. Then the 95 here came with airbags and kind of a voluntary um, OBD2. So it has an OBD1 and OBD2 for this. And then in 96, you had a full-fledged OBD2 plug-in, you know, for smog. The 94 did not have that. Now, as far as equipment, you can see you have the spoiler. I think the spoiler really started coming out in uh, 95 and up, even though you could probably just drill and put it on. Uh, maybe 93, could be 93 and up. But here we have a stock rear bumper on the 95, and we have a slee on the 94. In fact, that's why I bought this truck because those Slee rear bumpers or four by four labs or whoever you're getting, they're pricey these days. It's four grand with shipping. So I ended up buying this truck and I'm going to be taking that rear bumper and putting it on this truck. And then putting, well, that's another difference. These bumpers in the back, when it's 94 and older, you have like a chrome piece that comes along here 
they did away with that 95 and up. So I do have another set of bumpers that I'm going to be putting on this truck. And if this was a 4x4 Labs, I'd be kind of SOL because you have to cut your rear cross member. What's a rear cross member? It's this. So the sleeve goes right over that. You know, it's like it's uh, tight right, right onto that. And it's a bolt on. So that's what I like about the sleeve. You can bolt it on. Uh, 4x4 Labs, you have to do some cutting. And some people don't want to do that. One bummer on this truck is previous owner painted the roof I don't know why because this paint and I have another video about that this is one coat process which is phenomenal so the downside is it can oxidize from the Sun but the upside is go get your pink polishing pad and compound and just buff it right back to showroom shine so it's phenomenal there's no clear coat it is clear coat and white mixed together which is known as one coat process so if you ever get your hands on a white Land Cruiser and it the paint looks kind of eh, so so chalky faded out no no mirror don't worry you can polish that thing up and it's gonna look phenomenal and I do have a video on that white truck um, which I'll post in the description where when I first got it it was pretty much like coffee stained teeth and I took a scrub daddy to it believe it or not and I took some great products that I share on how to get that thing polished up okay so that's white and this one's moon glow pearl which I have to say is dates well right for a 95 this looks so relevant today it's it's great both trucks have like the brown tint in the windows. It wasn't till the LX470 and the 100 series in 2004 that they went to green tint on all their trucks and still to this day instead of the brown. Both of these are outfitted with bigger wheels because of the lift. So this is a good chance to see the difference between a mud terrain BFG, which I love that thick sidewall on the mud terrains and the Toyo mud terrains open country and I like these too so just real knobby um, they both are great they're both high rated tires and uh, both of these are the 315 um, 75 16s which is a 30 um, 35 inch effectively these wheels, I refinished them in Yankee Gold, and I have a video on that. <laughs> so that's with like a 2K paint and clear coat, and that Yankee Gold looks phenomenal against the white. I love it. But these wheels on the 95, I just keeping them OEM because you can see the finish is fantastic on those wheels. So another difference between these two trucks, you cannot take sliders down here and swap them with this reason being maybe on one side it'll fit but the reason being is the catalytic converters underneath on this one are side by side and on the 95 they're in line i don't know if we can get a shot of that but see they're in line they're they're um you know one's in front one's in back and the other one side by side because i thought even though i do like these sliders on the 95 these ones are a little bit more beefy. I was like, oh, maybe I'll switch them. And then I remembered, oh no, can't do that. The uh, catalytic converter will not allow. Now on the interiors, some of the differences, the dash and leather. So in the US market, leather in 94, 95, I do not believe was available. They were all upholstery. The upside to that is these ones, as much as I don't want to change these seats, there's some cracking. And this leather was like a thick, I call it crocodile leather, um, was uh, very likely to crack. But both had this as an option. So this is, as everybody knows, the magic switch, the electronic diff lockers. The other one doesn't have it, but it has some ARB aftermarket. And the dash you could see on the on the 2000 or sorry on the 1994 it keeps going here so you'll see that difference and airbags airbags in 95 and up and abs to the rear wheels and discs so on the 94 you do not have airbags maybe that's a plus when you're uh, off 
rotating, so they're not going to go off. Um, so, and is there a button? I know in my 100 and 200, there's a button to press to disconnect the airbags. I'll have to do my research. I can't remember if we have that same button here. So leather compared to upholstery. But the upholstery, look at that. That's 90, 94 and it's in great shape. I gotta uh, clean that one, but this one has been cleaned with, by the way, I'll share that with you, this product. Power out for carpets and then power out for the seats. All surface cleaner. This stuff is phenomenal. Wear gloves, there's chemicals in it. It gets crazy stains out that you would have not thought you could get out. So see that dash? how it's a lot longer this is an aftermarket part so don't think that that uh, that didn't come with these trucks so upholstery but you know the rear seats which are removed in this one um, the third row I should say all upholstery and then I'm noticing the center console has an indentation here versus the other has the leather this is kind of the go-to because cup holders were not existent. I don't know. In Japan, they're like, oh, why do you need cup holders? We, we drink tea before, uh, or sake before we go for uh, our overlanding. So you got to get this. And this is kind of the go-to that everybody gets, that uh, 3D molded cup holder. So other things. The 94 had a uh, MAP, so a mass airflow pressure sensor. And then... The 95 got a MAF, so a mass air, um, airflow um, sensor versus pressure sensor. So aftermarket, that's the aftermarket roof rack from Prinsu. I actually did swap that from the white truck as I'm going to swap this bar. Oh, by the way. Yes, you're probably seeing on what in Lord's name is under here and on the other side Under here well, that one's kind of of a giveaway. That is a, a Porsche cover on top of an FJ 40 it just seemed to fit so I'll we I will be doing a comparison video between that FJ 40 if you subscribe and want to check that compared to this one which you got to watch the video to find out what this is. Here's a hint. This was the vehicle that was made to replace the FJ40. So how's that for some trivia? That replaced the FJ40 back in 1984 when they stopped making the FJ40. But I digress. That'll be in another video. So back to the two cruisers. Let's uh, take a look at the engines and then we'll look at the suspension. And uh, I will think of whatever else I am forgetting about the differences of these two. But let's just see that uh, center console will go in. Yeah, so instead of an indentation, the center console um, is all leather. And I think the electronic, so the second and electronic, um, you know, to hold your RPMs, longer is there versus on the um on the 94 it's up here and the steering wheel is different so if you look at that steering wheel leather all round and, and thicker center compared to this different material for the steering column and uh smaller in the middle no airbag that's why all right, so there you can see the 24 valve 1FZ FE engine. So some of the changes when we're talking um, components here. Notice this. This was uh, changed. You know, there's some aftermarket. So there's an S-pod in here controlling the lights. And then here's the 95. And you can see they got rid of that here. But effectively, the same 24 valve engines. Very little change between the two of those. And again, in the 95, you could put the, uh, the supercharger much easily um, bolt on versus the 94. 
So another thing between these two trucks is transmission. Mid-95 all the way to 97, they changed the transmission. Uh, so the older one has the 442, the A442F, and then the newer one has the A343F. And you can see that on your, um, inside the door where it has all the vehicle information, as you can see here. And it's right there is where you'll see that a three four three f there's a lot of debate as far as which one's better you know what they're both good so it's, it's kind of not conclusive and then suspension so this has the icon so it's progressive look at that coil how it's all close you know at the top and then stretched out underneath just like an old man emu or a stock and then this has um obviously a reservoir there to the right with that shock a 2.5 versus the old man emu shocks um and these are the heavy duty ones i know in the back notice the coil how it is hang on let me get underneath so that's not a progressive that's one rate so the um, the icon is going to be a smoother city drive and maybe a little bit more of a bouncy buggy meaning like you can go at high rates of speed when you are uh, going you know down a wash wash ridden road washboard road and yeah that orange those are usually yellow i wrap that just i don't know something i did um th that is the old man emu uh, steering stabilizer and shock Let's get the hood shut on this. And as far as lights or that bar, so the ARB is just a big, beautiful bar. It's, you know, you see them all over the place in Australia, other parts of the world. And that has a snorkel where this one doesn't. I do not think I'll add a snorkel. I'm in California. There's not a lot of water crossings. And you know what, honestly, when the truck's that clean, do you wanna go in water up to the halfway in your door? I don't think so. But they both have, you know, the diff breathers. Um, but this bar, I just love it. It's made in America. ARB is made in China, folks. This one's US built. And that bar in front was 1100 bucks. What costs more than this bar up front are the Baja lights, the LP9s. And then those are some JK lights that I had fitted into, uh, into the bar with a nice little turning signal. So pretty cool look. And then the Prinsu rack, I custom made, I got a video on that too. I custom made this cutout to make it the exact length I wanted because they have a pre cutout that's 40 inches. And I think this is closer to 45 inches and I made it deeper. And look how close that is to the roof line. It's like right there. Fits like a glove with lots of bars. That way you can put a a tent you can walk up there totally secure so within the next week that's when the swap of that rear bumper and the uh, suspension systems are gonna swap out the other thing that this truck has it has the spider tracks um, spacers so if you look how that tire just comes out to me perfect right it's it's a little bit further out than flush and i think that looks good when the truck is lifted on this one trucks lifted no spacer so notice it disappears inside so it's there it is there you are you're hiding in that wheel well weren't you versus here it's nice and flush with that wheel well in the back disappears so it just depends on look you know as far as functionality yeah Loctite make sure you do a good job but you get a slightly wider stance and to me when you go up you need to go out a bit so on a lift I do like um, the spacers and spider track is the only ones uh, I would recommend to do which you can get over at Slee and uh, what else am I missing I think I pretty much covered it Obviously, since COVID and overlanding and people realizing this is the ultimate in uh, solid axles front and back, uh, these trucks are phenomenal.
So prices have gone up. In fact, one just sold. It was a 1,000 mile FZJ, a emerald green. That was the color of my first one. Sold for $136,000 on I Hate Mud. I'm thinking to myself, why don't you just go get a Heritage, a 2021 Heritage, and with the money left over, go get an 80 series. You'd have two trucks instead of just a low mile FZJ80. And you know, if it's not driven that long, you know, it's not good for a car just to sit around. It has to move, you know. I, I like a car that's got, I don't know, seven to 10,000 miles a year. And by the way, these two models, the, uh, the 95's got 170,000 miles and the uh, 94 has double that which is about 324,000 miles but when maintained properly these trucks go five six hundred thousand miles before any major engine work whenever we say 500,000 miles it doesn't mean oh that's over toss it no um, major engine worker you know what throw in a 5.7 liter <laughs> from a 200 series can you imagine that that would be phenomenal all right well uh, subscribe and you will see the um, the replacement of an FJ 40 right there under wraps we'll unveil that so happy overlanding get yourself an 80 you will love it